Some new developments in weight loss drugs. Novo Nordisk, the manufacturer of the injectables Ozempic and Wegovy, said that a pill version of its weight loss drugs helped people lose 15% of their body weight, according to late-stage clinical trial results. Pfizer advanced one of its weight loss pill candidates to a phase 2B study. And Eli Lilly is recruiting patients for a phase 3 trial of its injectable weight loss drug after mid-stage trial results showed that the drug helped patients lose up to 24% of their body weight in about a year. Joining us right now on this rapidly developing class of drugs is Dr. Angela Fitch. She is the chief medical officer of Known Well, which is a new company. She also, though, is the former director of the Mass General Weight Center in Boston. And, and Dr. Fitch, thank you for being with us today. You think it's fair to say that obesity is an epidemic in America? It is. We know that um, up to you know 40 percent of Americans have obesity. And that number is expected to grow to 50% by the year 2030. And those numbers were projected prior to COVID. And we know the COVID pandemic made the disease of obesity worse for several reasons. So what do these new drugs mean? They're very exciting for us. I mean, it's a very exciting time. I'm also president of the Obesity Medicine Association, which is our association of clinicians who practice this, you know, help patients uh, with their disease of obesity. And it's never, it's been a, it's a, great time to practice obesity medicine and help patients uh, with this disease state because now more than ever we have uh, more effective treatments you know to help them you know reach their health goals and their wellness goals i think back to prior drugs and, and different regimens that we thought were going to be effective like fenfen from over 20 years ago um, it's kind of built into me this idea that anything that seems too good to be true probably is is it really different with this new class of drugs it is really different. You know, GLP-1 agonists, which a lot of these medications are, as you mentioned uh, in the startup to this, have been around for over 20 years. So we have a lot of data on this class of medication, on the safety data, including some data to show, especially in people with diabetes who have also take these medications, that they can prevent even uh, cardiovascular disease. They have anti-inflammatory benefits. They reduce inflammation. In fact, uh, Novo Nordisk and other companies are studying these types of medications in diseases like Alzheimer's because of that anti-inflammatory effect. So they have a multitude of effects. And it does sound, you know, too good to be true, so to speak, but it actually is the advancement of science and the understanding of a disease state of obesity. What are the risks associated with this? I mean, I've heard that there could be potential cancer risks with some of them. The other issue that's always thrown up is, do you have to stay on these drugs forever to maintain the weight so loss? That is a, I'll, I'll take that second one first. There is a, um, that question that comes up a lot. And, you know, I think I would, you know, push that back a little bit and say, well, we don't ask that about other chronic diseases, right? Part of that is because of the bias and stigma around the fact that obesity is seen as a personal moral failure of, of patients and not something that is related to a disease state like hypertension or diabetes or cardiovascular disease. So we have other diseases where we're on medication for the rest of our life in order to live a longer, healthier life um, throughout the course of our lifespan. And we don't ask that question, you know, are we going to go off these medications? Nobody wants to be on medication. Nobody wants to have surgery. Nobody wants to have a disease in the first place. But if we can advance science and treat these diseases so that we can live longer, healthier lives, I think that's the, the biggest issue. To we your point work. around... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, it's just... Uh, sorry, uh, you can finish that point as well. But I was just thinking that... that it's hard to find any drug that doesn't have a side effect profile, and, and obviously the, the the benefits of of uh, you know dealing with obesity is is just huge and su such an advance. But you do worry it wasn't designed for that. It wasn't it? It was a di diabetes drug. It, it it makes me think of I think minoxidil wasn't that for high blood pressure or something, and it's like hey my hair's not falling out. So all of a sudden it's a and I think Viagra was for high blood pressure, too. And it's like, whoa, something else is happening. And it's just weird when it's serendipitous that, that causes you to, to discover something. It makes me uncomfortable that maybe there are side effects that, that we don't really know about. Or am I just, but, but the benefits seem so significant that maybe, you know, it's never perfect. Exactly. There's always side effects. And that's what we do, you know, in... Uh, the the evidence-based treatment of obesity, right, is we manage that with the patient. We have a shared decision-making discussion about the risks and benefits. 
And to your question around you know, cancer risk, at this point in time, we don't have any clear uh, increased risk of cancer of any sort with these class of medications. There's been a lot of uh, speculation around that, et cetera, but also a lot of a look at the data of patients that have been on these drugs for 20 years. And like other uh, issues, we know obesity actually increases your risk of cancer. So in treating obesity, you actually decrease the risk as well. So there is that sort of... Um, plus and minus uh, issue that goes on that we always right. have to weigh. What about um, off-label usage for people who don't have diabetes, yeah. who aren't obese? Um, you hear things like Ozempic face. <laughs> what, what, where does the risk-reward scenario drop off very seriously? Well, that's the, the, again, where we think that they should be used. These you know, drugs should be used responsibly and respectfully uh, in a, a chronic disease treatment pathway with your uh, clinician, your physician, your nurse practitioner, whoever is helping you, you know, with these diseases to treat these, these important things in our life. And so, again, I think the, the focus should be on, you know, ozempic face is not specific to ozempic. It's a side effect of weight loss. So if you lose a substantial amount of weight, even when you have 100 pounds to lose, you're going to look different. Your skin is different, et cetera. That's one of the side effects that people um, have to you know, manage.